not heard about these, these resources yet, so they were happy to accept these and um, to be able to post them for their employees or for their, um, their patrons. If you are someone who has previously been a part of the Women of the ELCA or is interested in becoming part of the Women of the ELCA, um, our Senate is looking to revitalize our chapter. Um, and on June 9th, there will be a special gathering in the bottom, um, but also they are asking the pastors to, to put them in charge, or them, they. The leaders of our synodical chapter of the Women of the ELCA are asking pastors to put them in touch with people in our congregations that might be interested and uh, being a part of that. So if you are someone who is, a, who is interested, please let me know. Right now, they're specifically speaking about two advocacy topics um, and how we can be a part of, of uh, moving the needle on those things. Specifically, they're talking about human trafficking and uh, the various different um, concerns at the board. So if you are interested in any of that, please let me know. There's more information in the builder about that, and uh, I would love, love to hear from you. This week, uh, I will be out of the office for a couple of reasons. <laughs> I'll be in the office on Tuesday, but tomorrow, Memorial Day, our office observes, and uh, the office is closed. And then Wednesday through Saturday, I will be traveling for our Senate Assembly in Reno. Um, Delator Lamb is coming with me to be our in person voting member, and Jean Abbey will be participating this week online as one of our voting members on Zoom. We are um, facing a lot of stuff as a Senate. <laughs> we have a lot to, to um, get through from a business perspective, but also from an examining our hearts perspective. So please pray for us as we are in assembly Thursday. Friday and Saturday, um, and I will be back on Sunday for you all. Sunday is Pentecost, uh, so be sure to wear your red or do whatever festive thing sounds like fun. We would be happy to see the red wavy sticks if you still have them from our time at home. Um, we are happy to, to celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit. This Wednesday, uh, we will not be having Women's Bible Study. It's kind of a last minute decision, but uh, I will not be ready to leave for Senate Assembly if I have Bible Study, I've decided. So <laughs> we, will be, we will be canceling our Women's Bible Study on Wednesday. We have been live streaming this service since we returned uh, to in-person worship. And I am looking for a couple of people who are, actually I'm looking for several people, so that we don't have to do it every week, who might be willing to learn just a little bit about the app that, that I use to get us set up online. It takes very little to know, um, but I need someone who can monitor it, so when it decides to try to switch internet uh, networks or other things in the middle of our service, Someone can take care of that for the people at home because I usually am not in a position to do that while I'm leading worship. So if you are someone who uses an iPhone or an iPad and knows how to use your camera and or your Facebook page, then you probably already know more than you need to know to help you with live streaming. So see me if you might be willing to do that. Next Sunday, our brothers and sisters at First Presbyterian Church on Santa Clara are going to be having um, another, another service for meditation and music in, in prayer for Ukraine from 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock p.m. They've committed themselves to doing this the first Sunday of every month until that conflict has been resolved or at least until the fighting has stopped. So if you are looking for a place for prayer and contemplation, if you're looking for some beautiful music 
tomorrow, next Sunday from 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock, First Presbyterian Church is a lovely place to do that. Let us prepare our hearts for worship.
Please rise as you are able. Let us confess our sin before God and one another. Lord of life, though we have made all things new, we still cling to the old. Forgive us when we doubt your presence, resist your call, and lose heart in the face of challenges. Remind us that you are greater than our problems, our petty concerns, our foolish preoccupations, and restore us to the darkness of the Amen. Jesus is risen indeed, and we have received the most precious blessing life eternal in his kingdom. Neither sin nor evil has the power to separate us from the one who loves us, the one who forgives us in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray, loving God. You are the humble and highly exalted. Hold before us your ultimate example of servitude and sacrifice, setting the standard for love that knows no boundaries. For the sake of Jesus, Amen. You may be seated for the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the sixth chapter. Glory to the Lord. No good tree bears bad fruit. Nor again does a bad tree bear good fruit, for each tree is known by its own fruit. Figs are not gathered from thorns, nor are grapes picked from the bramble bush. The good person, out of the good treasure of the heart, produces good. The evil person, out of evil treasure, produces evil. For it is out of the abundance of the heart that the mouth speaks. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Our primary reading today from the narrative lectionary comes from Philippians, the second chapter. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit. But in humility, regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself. Taking on the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God so highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, Every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Word of God, word of God. Thanks be to God. Grace to you and 
peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 I need to be at church this week. I need to be at church this week. And the very last place I wanted to be this week was standing at this pulpit. This week hurt. And I don't know that it hurt anymore because there was another shooting this week or because the shooting involved children or because once again we're watching hatred and we're hearing political spin or whether it's because it happened again or whether it's because it's happening some more or whether it's because it's not just shooting and shootings and death it's because our world is heavy and this is just the icing on top of it all i'll tell you i have spent this week writing and rewriting in my mind and on paper and in front of my bible and in front of commentaries and in front of my television and while reading the newspaper i have written and rewritten the sermon and i never came to a place i liked never because if i did what i really wanted to do which was just stand here and get angry Two things happened. Three things happened. None of which I liked. One, I didn't touch on what St. Paul had to say in this beautiful and important piece of scripture. Two, I got angry, but I never preached the gospel. It was never about Jesus dying for our sins. It was never about God loving us in spite of ourselves. It was just me being angry. And three, I came out of my skin to the point that you said, well, that's not our pastor. <laughs> See you later. Like I said, I didn't like that sermon. <laughs> None of that is my style. But it's where my heart went first. And it's not just, as I said, the news about the shooting in Buffalo and the shooting in Laguna Hills and the shooting in Uvalde, or even the 200 shootings that, mass shootings that happened before that this year. There's heartbreak in our nation. There's heartbreak in our world. There's heartbreak in our church. And I even know there's heartbreak in our homes. It's a lot. And I just wanted to be cranky about it for a little while. But luckily, we have St. Paul, who writes to us from prison. If then there is any, any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the spirit, any compassion and sympathy. You don't have to be overflowing with these things, just do you have any of these things? If so, make my joy complete. 
be of the same mind, the same love, be in full accord in one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. In that first really ugly sermon, the really bad one, before any edits, I have a lot to say to people who don't want to work together to find a solution to problems, but instead want to wring their hands and say, well, there's nothing we can do. We can't control people. We can't control mental illness. We can't control bigotry. We can't control hate. We can't control how people are going to respond or act. That's what freedom is. In that sermon, I got very angry some more. Because at the heart of all of what we are seeing right now is a need to be right. A need to be in charge. A need to be in control of our own destiny to be able to protect our own selves and our own things, to be the center of our own world and our own life. And everyone else just needs to get with the program. But that's not what this Bible reading says. That certainly isn't what Jesus said, no. Instead, here we read about what it looks like to truly sacrifice for someone what love really looks like. It looks like God, not a king, God, choosing to be limited by these frail bodies. In this world that has some really weird ways of getting along, to be limited by a lifespan, to be limited by our own body's abilities, to be limited by the way other people interact with us. God chose to be limited so that God can ultimately show us the most pure, the most true, most self-sacrificial love there can be. While we live in a country screaming, well, what about me? What about my rights? What about my protection? What about my family? What about my ability to earn? What about my ability to get ahead in this world? What about my American dream? We read instead about the joy and compassion that comes in choosing to make a sacrifice. See, there's a big difference between someone else choosing that sacrifice for you. There's a big difference between being told you have to give your sister half of your Halloween candy and deciding your sister can have half of your Halloween candy. There's a big difference between choosing to serve your country and being told to serve your country. There's a big difference between choosing to limit your own rights for the sake of looking out for the goodness of everyone. And we have that gift. We have not only the example but also the command to live in a way that we sacrifice joyfully for the other. That we joyfully are able to give up 
some of ourselves for the sake of the blossoming of others. Parents, you understand that. You absolutely understand this kind of sacrifice. I'm sure you would have enjoyed your time in Maui. Guess what? Your kids needed orthodontia. And you were happy to do it for them. We live in a time where people want control because our world feels so uncontrollable. I have a secret for you. Taking control doesn't give you control. Hoarding power doesn't actually get you any closer to being able to dictate how this world is going or will work. Instead, we have the example of God who, I mean, think about it, it wasn't that he just should have been able to control the world. He was the person in charge of the world. When God came to earth, God realized bullying people around, causing them to live a life of fear, that's not going to get any of us anywhere. Instead, serving one another, loving one another, looking out for the best interests of the other will in turn offer the greatest joy to us. What does it look like to live in a world of people who are loving one another, who are so busy loving one another they cannot have time to fight one another? What does it look like to be so busy teaching our children what it looks like to love one another with our actions, to love one another with our words, that we do not have time to teach them the things to be afraid of. What does it look like for us to be people who are being loved, who are being, who are being watched over and cared for by one another? so that we do not have to worry or fear for ourselves. Well, I know that it changed the world once. We do. I know that when Jesus did it, it absolutely changed the world and the world's future. What could it look like we embraced it ourselves. Amen.
time, we would like to install the church council for 2022-2023. Um, I'd like to invite forward Ray Wentz, Anita Berniford, Kristen Muller, Carol Lukey, Margie Sh Sherritt, and Ken Bufleyden, please. Please come forward. You don't need to be too close to me without my mask on. <laughs> um, and we have also Elizabeth Materos, who is visiting a granddaughter graduating from high school, I think her granddaughter is. And uh, also Mary James and Demeter Lamb were installed in our earlier service. These folks have been elected by the congregation to this position of leadership and are, are um, being asked to serve you, our congregation, as our church council. In holy baptism, our Lord Jesus Christ liberated you in, from sin and death and made you members of his church. Through word and sacrament, you have been nurtured in faith. You have confessed the faith of the church. And St. Paul writes, there are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same spirit gives them. There are different ways of serving, but the same Lord is served. There are different abilities to perform, but the same God gives to everyone ability for a particular service. The spirit's presence is shown in some way in each person for the good of all. You have been elected to these positions of leadership and trust in this congregation. You are to see that the words and deeds of this household of faith reflect the one in whose name we gather, Jesus Christ. You are to work together with other members of Trinity Lutheran Church to see that the worship and work of Christ are done in this congregation and that God's will is done in this community and the whole world. You are to be diligent in your specific area of serving, that the one Lord who empowers you is glorified. You are to be examples of faith, active in love, to help maintain the life and harmony of this congregation. And on behalf of your sisters and brothers in Christ, I now ask you, are you ready to accept and faithfully to carry out the duties of the offices to which you have been elected? If so, please answer yes by the help of God. Yes, by the help of God. People of God, I ask you now to support these, your elected leaders. Will you share in the mutual ministry that Christ has given to all who are baptized? If so, please answer yes, by the help of God. Yes, by the help of God. Well, I now declare you installed as council members of this congregation. God bless you with the Holy Spirit that you may prove faithful servants of Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.
It may have some blessing rather than a burden to those who serve. Listen, Lord. Hear our prayer. At the name of Jesus, all creation stands in awe. As a child instinctively knows its parent, so does all of earth and heaven know its creator. May we glorify our God in all we think, do, and say. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. All around us are the tangible signs of your love. A cool breeze, a whiff of fresh flowers, a breathtaking sunlight, the sweetness of the earth's fruits. Enliven us with all that you have created and make us joyful to be a part of your beautiful world. Listen, Lord. Hear our prayer. We give you thanks, great physician, for the many ways you have given to resist COVID-19. We thank you for vaccines and medications to treat infection. We give you thanks for doctors and nurses and research personnel and frontline workers. Though we find ourselves in a less precarious place than we have over the last two years, we continue to pray for the health and safety of all in light of the COVID-19 virus. Listen, Lord. Hear our prayer. Christ of suffering and pain, of resurrection and restoration, be close to those who need to know your healing presence and give your particular blessing to those who we name today. Family of Steve Gilio, the family of Derek Kuhn, Vincent Maloney, George Lyon, Sandra Selesky, Greg Bryant, Annalise Simmons, Susan Mojou, Helen Pedersen, Anne Kenyon, Trisha, Trisha Pamphysum, Deanna Madras, Craig Anderson, Pastor Craig, Tommy Bryant, Marilyn, Michael Rasmussen, Hilke de Arce, Jackson Bone, Buddy and Sherry Scott, Nancy Stitch, Patricia Bruno, Gail Tomac, Kate Gashnock, Jeff Pine, Michael Lamb, Maddie Pierce, Lily Pruitt, Christine Winberg, and Dorothy Wingard. Ms. and Lord, hear us our prayer. We pray them before the ministries of the Word, the Trinity Church Council, the priesthood of all believers, All Saints Lutheran Church in Nevada, the Lutheran Church of Cachatuba in Rwanda, the Lutheran Ministry of Nursing Homes, our Sunday School, and the East Bay Youth Program. We give thanks for the fullness of the life of Fern Stern as she celebrates her birthday this week. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. As your saints live their lives to you, so give us a purpose to which we would dedicate our own lives. Hearten us by their steadfast example and join us in eternal communion when our race is completed. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. At this time, you are invited to pray the prayers of your heart, either silently or loudly. Lord, we give you thanks for the lives of all those who are lost to gun violence. We give you thanks for the joys that they experienced and shared. For the love that they gave while they were with us. We ask for presence with their families and their friends. And that their loss might make a change. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. We pray, God, for the hearts of your people. We pray that you might help us to see service as a joy, not as a burden. We pray, God, that you might help to turn your people, your creation, 
into a place that nurtures each other, a place that provides life, so that we do not have to worry about death. We pray, God, that you would be in those places where people are in harm's way. Protect them, care for them, show them other ways. Risen Lord, I pray that our nation and our leaders will find the solution to gun violence. We'll find a way that we can protect our children, our elderly, our community from gun violence with laws that are sensible and moral work. Please, Lord, be our leaders in your care as they guide legislation. Risen Lord, I hold before you two Lord teachers who this day now how they come to protect the children entrusted to them in the classroom. I pray for the families of the two teachers that died this week, for the children that lost both their mother and father. Lord, help us as a nation to bring them to this violence. Protect our children, protect our teachers, and protect all. Precious Lord, Hear our prayers. Make us humble like you and sell us for your gospel. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And also Let us share that peace with the world as we go out of this place. Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And give us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may God, the author of life, Christ, the living cornerstone, and the spirit of adoption, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Amen.